Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julia Zamora. We received a text from a listener who has leaf scorch on their newly planted viburnums. Hear what they can do in our first segment. Is your lawn turning into a patchwork of spots or blotches of red, purple, or brown? We'll tell you what is happening during our second segment. Your lawn's not the only thing changing colors. The trees have started to change to their autumn glory. Have you ever wondered why leaves change color in the fall? We've got the answers for you in our third segment. This time of year, animals become the pests in your garden and landscape. Mice, moles, skunks, and deer all become destructive and annoying problems. Hear more what you can do during our fourth segment. This week, we got a call from longtime listener Howard Kozak of Staten Island. After listening to last week's show, he was inspired. Hear why during our final segment. So stay tuned, and we will be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Do you think you have insects eating away your nice, beautiful lawn? Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below is the product for you. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus Above and Below not only controls chinch bugs, which is a surface-feeding insect, but also controls grubs, which is a subsurface-feeding insect. It does it all guaranteed. When most homeowners see their lawn turning brown in the summer, they think grubs. Damage from the larva of Japanese beetle. But in many cases, it could be chinch bugs. Chinch bugs are hard to see because they are so small and you'd need to get down on your hands and knees to see them. If you misdiagnose your problem, Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below has you covered. The product will control both chinch bugs and grubs. This summer, control your pest problems with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. It also may be used in flower beds, on landscape ornamentals, trees, and shrubs. Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below will also control crane fly larvae, ants, mole crickets, sod webworms, bill bugs, and many more. Your property will be pest free with Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below. So next time you're visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's Bug Blaster Plus above and below and expect to have the best looking lawn and landscape in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York Tri-State area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, listener, text us on the Bloomers in the Garden hotline and asked about his viburnum, they were showing a little bit of leaf scorch. Here's their text. This past summer, we planted several viburnum plants behind our home and mulched the surrounding area. We have been watering when the leaves look a little droopy about two times a week during the really hot weeks. One or two plants are showing brown tips on their leaves. I am not familiar with this plant, Am I doing something wrong, or is this normal for this plant at this time of year? Recommendations for their care and feeding going forward? What should I expect the plants to do as we go into the fall and winter? Huh. They water when they go droopy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, to be honest with you, if they're starting to droop, cells are dying. And that you shouldn't, you can get away with it once in a while, but that should not be your signal to water. 
Index finger probe. Da, da, da. Yep. Develop a pattern. Stick your finger in. You want to water deeper. Um, you know, it, it's basically you're not you weren't watering enough, and that that caused the leaf scorch. The good news is they're viburnums. They're tough plants, and even if they dropped every single leaf right now, they would be just fine in spring because there are secondary buds and there are also those buds are already formed for, for next year, but you shouldn't really make them do that because you never know when you, you know, put them over the edge and then those buds start to dry up. That, that would be a problem. Deep water, deep water. You're watering a couple times a week. Um, you need to check the soil, but it's better to get, those plants out of that root zone so where the new roots of the newly planted plants are are being drawn deeper into the soil uh right now it sounds like that they were subject in the drought zone and subject to drying out hey here's a question for you did you add a soil amendment like bumper crop to the soil when you plant it I bet you didn't. I bet you didn't. I bet you didn't. You mentioned mulch. Oh, yeah. You didn't mention any soil amendment. Yeah. And here's the difference. A soil amendment prepares your plants, newly planted plants, to go into your soil because you mix a 50-50 mix of, of bumper crop. And, and I was looking over some show notes from last year, right. and we explained how to plant a shrub. Right. And, it, and here it is, folks. It, mm-hmm. It's... Dig a hole twice the size of the bottom. Yes, twice the size of the bottom. You're going to add half the soil you took out of the hole and half the bumper crop and mix it all around. And then you're going to put the plant back in, pack more of that mixture all around the edge, so eliminating any air pockets. And you're going to have the root slightly raised above the soil line because there will be a certain amount of settling. You definitely don't want it deeper. Because that's going to be a problem. Uh, go ahead. You're going to say yeah, something. I was going to say. I had a customer come in the other, uh, yesterday, the other, Len, mm-hmm. and he showed me his Leyland Cypress. He says, "Oh, you know, it's really struggling. You know, it looks yellowish." And he came with a cup of his soil. It was all sandy. And yeah. I said, and I said, "What did you do?" I said, yeah. yeah, I just planted it right in that soil. Hey, look, you're giving your you want your plants to get a fighting start, and you're helping them by adding soil amendment. Yeah. The, the, don't cheapen out. No, don't cheapen out. Just, that's what it comes down to. It's like no, oh, no. It's yeah. like how many times do you ha- oh. have a, the liars? Oh, I have it at home. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you have bumper crop at home? Yes, I have. Uh, it. <laughs> they What's don't. That? What is that? <laughs> it's like uh, no, no, no. I don't. I don't want. I don't think. I don't. I don't think my wife would want me to buy it. No. <laughs> you coward! <laughs> really, because it's a difference between your plant living and your plant struggling, and it it will help aid in your watering techniques. And look, you're going to need that. The plants are not going to be established for basically two years, and that as their root system establishes into your your soil. It'll be easier to water, but you're still going to have to do supplemental water during really dry spells. I mean, this summer, late summer into the September has been extremely uh, dry, really dry, extremely dry. And if it wasn't for the hurricane, we <laughs> might not have <laughs> any <laughs> rain, yeah. but we have not had a good substantial yeah. rain. Like my pond, I had to add water to my Absolutely. pond yeah. because it's evaporated. So it has been very, very dry, very dry. Very dry yeah. um, I would recommend, you know, land uh, Circle hoses too, because a lot of people when they water, they, like you're saying, they don't add enough deep, you know, deep water into their plants. Right. I see. I see where people are like tapping their foot. It's like I gotta go. I gotta go to this. I gotta drive the kids to the to the right. soccer field. Yeah. I gotta yeah. do this. It's like all right, that's good enough. Yeah, you know? that's right. <laughs> where seconds. this, you can just put it on a timer and let it go. Yeah. You don't even. You don't no have to worry. worry about it. And and the more water you put down, the less often you'll have to water them, which is yeah. what you're really looking for. Um, again, it, it has been a very dry summer. We, yeah. we talked about that last week. Mm-hmm. Now you're wondering what to do going forward. Espoma Hollytone, you know, is the best choice to do both fall and spring and that you're going to follow the package recommendations 
And even if the leaves are off the plants this fall, their root system is still active. So don't just think just because the leaves are gone that there's nothing going on. Oh, yeah, there's, 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 there's fire down below. Um, Julio. Anyway, that the if you feed them a spoma holytone, it's all organic. It, it is one of the best, if not the best, granular fertilizers on the market. That's a spoma holytone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They said they mulched. Yeah. My son, Carl, who, who runs the, the nursery at Bloomers and, and does landscape, uh, that uh, he gets uh, so irritated when he goes to a house and there are mulch volcanoes around hated, plants. Yeah. And I hate it, too, because it gives, first of all, it puts all that mulch around the, the, the trunk of whether it's a tree or whether it's a plant. And it, you don't want to do that. You want to do two to four inches of mulch, okay, and don't, you know, basically get it up all around around the plant. You want to create almost like a well effect so that the water goes down into the root system. The mulch is there to protect it from drying out. And also, it's it's a certain amount of weed control. But, again, no mulch volcanoes to where you're putting it up around the base or the trunk of the of the shrub or tree. That's a no no. So uh, add add mulch if you haven't mulched um, recently. Make sure that you're checking the mulch, but check how much you have first. Just don't pile it on. It's always a good idea too, where your mulch will get compacted, and that you can revitalize your mulch by just raking it up real hard and 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 doing it that way. You may not need to add anything, so you don't want more than four inches of mulch around your shrubs. Um, And again, you know, one thing we didn't mention is wilt stop or wilt proof, Uh, anti-transparent. Now for deciduous plants, it's not going to do so much, but your broadleaf evergreens and for any of your other types of evergreens, please read the instructions first, but it slows down the evaporation of moisture through the leaves and needles of evergreens. Yeah, and perspirant, right? Yep, that's <laughs> right. That's <laughs> right. Uh, like chapstick for your plants. Chapstick for your plants, that's right. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah. it. So make sure you're you're using that. I mean, I probably, I would wait a little bit. Yeah. You know, you, know, you don't want to, probably October, late October, mm-hmm. um, November. But, uh, again, it sounds like everything's going to live. Your viburnums yeah, are going to going to flower in, the, in that yeah. they're going to do great. But uh, every time they were drooping, they were telling you you're bringing us to the brink of damage. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you're trying to, to figure out the balance so that doesn't happen. Yeah. Next year will be easier because we are supposed to have this is a rainy season for fall and a rainy season for spring. Yeah. And then when you start watering again in, say, late spring, that uh, it's going to be easier. So it's good. Index finger probe. That's it. Feel the soil. Know if the moisture is there or not and develop a pattern. Anything to add, Julio Zamora? No, we hit all those uh, key elements. Right. You're, you're doing good. Yep. You're doing good because you spotted it. Yeah. A lot of people don't even don't notice. It. It's yeah. like, oh, here, look. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, want my, I, I want to return this because I killed it. <laughs> killed it yeah. um, but uh, you caught it. You, you caught saw it time, first. So yeah. you're doing a good job. Nice job Keep yeah. up the good work. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Hollytone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. 
Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Last year, millions of Americans asked the Internet about protecting their lawns and gardens. There's one simple answer. BioAdvanced. Because gardeners have trusted the Blue Bottle for decades. Invasive insects? Blue Bottle. Lawn fungus? Blue Bottle. Japanese beetles? Blue Bottle. A BioAdvanced answer for every question and guaranteed solutions for every problem. BioAdvanced. Get more from the Blue Bottle. BioAdvanced All-in-One Rose and Flower Care controls insects and diseases, plus feeds. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Is your lawn changing colors? Is it becoming a patchwork of shades and colors? <laughs> You've got annual weeds dying off. Yes, yes you do. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you don't have to put down a crabgrass killer. <laughs> Nature is taking care of it that, for you. Isn't that great? You know, do you, are birds feeding on your lawn? Oh. Like all of a sudden, there are birds yeah. like everywhere. I, a flock I, of birds. Coming I, I saw. A flo- I did. I yeah. saw a flock of birds not too long ago. I was driving past somebody's house, and there was just full of birds. Yeah. Um, and it was clear they didn't recede, yeah. <laughs> okay. but what it was is that they were eating the crabgrass seeds, which they are being helpful, um, that are dropping off of those dying plants. And any of those spots where you see it's turning different colors, they're basically finished for the year. They're dropping their seed. And obviously a lot of people think, oh, when it gets cold, that happens. No, it's the sun, right? It's the sun and the amount of daylight that calls things into action. I, I keep thinking about hummingbirds. It's like, should oh, yeah. I keep feeding my hummingbirds? Should I keep feeding my hummingbird? Aren't they going to freeze? Like, don't they freeze to the to the hummingbird the feeder and they, yeah, they're they stuck there? No, yeah. no, no. Hummingbirds are called by the sun to say, hey, time to time leave. To time yeah. to leave. Same thing with monarch butterflies. When yeah, they go across thing. to Mexico, mm-hmm. they're called by the sun. So if you have them, keep feeding them. Um but so the whole thing about crabgrass and other types of grassy weeds in your lawn, it starts now. Like now is when they, they're replacing the old plant. <laughs> so you, you get one, they're an annual grassy weed and that they're dropping their seeds. So, so what, do you, what does that mean? You better get pre-emergent on in the fall. And that it'll prevent them from coming up, not fall, excuse me, rewind. You need to put it down in the spring and that the pre-emergent control. So a lot of people, and it's it's amazing how um, Scott's company has changed the vernacular. Mm. Oh, you mean step one. It's step one. (laughs) Um, Step one in the Scott's annual program is a crabgrass preventer with pendimethalin and fertilizer. Um, every company has their own uh, version of that, and and it used to only be a crabgrass preventer plus fertilizer. Now, understand, this is why it's such a great time to put down grass seed. Grass seed will germinate when the temperatures are, you know, the soil temperatures are 50 degrees or higher. Now, if you seed in the fall, you can still get that to germinate and take care of, and then you can put a pre-emergent crabgrass control and fertilizer in the spring, and everything's good. If you seed in the spring, you have to use a specific type of crabgrass preventer that is distinguishes between regular grass plants and between... Uh, crabgrass plants. So, and its effectiveness is, it, it works. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. It works, mm-hmm. but it's not the best situation. So if you're, you need to seed, you need to seed in the fall. It's the best time. Now, do I, here you go, Julio Zamora, mm-hmm. for no money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Can you, can you answer this question? Uh, so do I put down my pre-emergent crabgrass control just once in the spring? No, you're going to do it twice. Amen, brother. Yeah. Yeah, and to. and that's the you thing. Have you to. have to. have to. So what happens is that, okay, you put down your crabgrass control, and, you know, the one thing is like, oh, you put it down when the forsythias bloom. There's a lot of forsythias. There's not as many forsythias as there used to be. <laughs> and so it's going to be March, April. And that's when you're going to prevent the broadest range of crabgrass. 
But what happens is, is that that stops working after a while, and there's still dormant crabgrass seeds that are maybe deeper in the soil or at a different spot that all of a sudden they start coming up, and this is in late May or even June. So you want to put a second shot after you go and you put down. So your first application is going to be March, April. Your next shot is going to be, you know, probably about six weeks after that. And that way you get the full season control and you get the first shot of crabgrass trying to germinate. And then you get those lingering seeds that are still in the soil that they will come up. Um, And make sure you go to your local garden center and you take a look because you're going to be wanting to do a like step two, uh, what they see again, Scott's company, Uh, step two, I mean, step two, um, Eight, for longer than Scott's was uh, in existence for their step program, it was it was and it still is a weed and feed. Uh, the basic active ingredients are all the same, and that that's going to be your actually second or third step, or you can always do it in conjunction because you can always do a liquid for your broadleaf weed control. So, again, if liquids work better for killing existing living weeds crabgrass controls work better when it's a preventer and it creates a barrier in the soil to prevent that crabgrass from coming up so it it makes sure that you're putting in two applications in the spring uh especially when you're seeing you know your lawn changing colors because there could be other weeds there but uh, most likely it's crabgrass so Julio's lawn is zoysia. Yeah, so I don't You've do never that. dealt with crabgrass. I, never. You just have to deal with zoysia, zoysia. which yeah. is such like a giant weed on your lawn. Yeah, yeah. But, but I understand. At least it stays the same color. Well, well it stays brown quite yeah. a bit. <laughs> Vera Brown, yeah, Vera I hope you're I. listening. Yeah. Shout out to Vera Brown. Mm-hmm. She is a, uh, I guess, a proponent of, uh, of zoysia. Of zoysia yeah. <laughs> Tough. I don't know. I don't know. Warm season grass that doesn't belong here. Anyway, uh, so back to crabgrass control. Uh, just make sure you're doing it twice in the spring. Uh, the great thing is, is that it's dying off on its own now. So you're only, what's happening is dropping its seeds and, and other spots where you'll tell by almost the color. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's brown over there. So that m- might be uh, a type of, um, say, Kalinga that might be dying off. Uh, and that might, which is great. I, I, I have a lot of Kalinga on my lawn. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's one of those things where I need to control it by killing it all. But that means I have to replace my entire lawn. <laughs> and, um, oh, wow. you know. I, you got a big lawn. I do have a big lawn. <laughs> I have a big lawn and an aging back. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, but it's something that, that can be done. It's something that can be done. But make sure that you're getting your fertilizers down now in the fall because you're you're really you're the put the effort you put in now uh, in the fall you'll reap the rewards in the spring. Mm-hmm. So I you'll see it you'll see it go outside today and, and look at your lawn and and you'll find patches where all of a sudden it's yeah. like wow What's going on? you know that I thought that that. Would, and that overseeding is is a good idea. Liming this time of year is a good idea, but make sure you're putting down your fall fertilizer. You could do all of those things the same day. Anything to add, Julio? Yeah, I I, uh, I would say you know go to your local garden center and and they're going to guide you as to what to do. Yeah, you know because you know like you said, like you know, step one, that's all you do. Boom, and you're gonna you're gonna have uh, issues down the line. Yeah. Yeah, and that's uh, that's not good. And and garden centers, they, they know that their advantage over whether it's a box store or whether it's the internet is that they have the regionalized information that you need to take care of your lawn your, in your neighborhood. Yeah, your your specific lawn because they're all different. Right, and that again, when you're looking on the web and you're reading for something for California, you don't realize it. Um, oh, you know, I was looking at, I was reading an article. And I was like, that doesn't sound right. That, and then I realized that it was written for Oregon. Oh, sorry. You know, you've, you've got to, you know, you've got to make sure you know where the sources are and your best source is your local garden center. And then you become, you know, somebody, you get adopted. Mm-hmm. You know, Julio, you have so <laughs> many people that come in and it's like, you know, 
look, I'm the owner of Bloomers. I gonna, hey, can I help you? No, I want to see Julio. It's like, <laughs> you know, I go in, I cry for an hour. <laughs> yeah, <you're good>. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that that the folks at the garden center want right. to teach you and train you and that they have the information that you need for yeah. your lawn. Successful. All right, we'll be back in the garden. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. We are proud to announce that Bloomers in the Garden has partnered with Renewal by Anderson of Greater Philadelphia, Delaware, South Jersey, and Southern Maryland. Renewal by Anderson is the top window and door company in the United States, specializing in replacement windows and doors. You might be thinking right now, what the heck do windows have to do with gardening? Well, Renewal by Anderson makes this beautiful garden bay window that's energy efficient and made from recycled materials. It's perfect for growing the finest indoor plants possible. When you are looking out your windows filled with plants in your beautiful garden, you don't want to see old windows that are cloudy, warped, or even rotting. That's why people in the horticulture community love Renewal by Anderson. Not only do we want our gardens to be beautiful, but their homes as well. Renewal by Anderson participates in horticultural events such as flower shows, earth days, and eco fairs. To get more information and set up a free home consultation, please visit www.philadelphiawindow.com. And be sure to tell them Bloomers in the Garden sent you. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 AM. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, the fall fireworks have started. The autumn leaves are putting on a colorful show. Now, have you ever wondered why are they doing this? Uh, I, it's almost early, I think. Doesn't it feel early? It feels early. Yeah. You know, we're still oh, like September, the end of September. But it, I think it has to do with a little bit of the dryness in the air. Yeah, but nice. is it the cooler nights, which we I don't feel we had yet, yeah. shorter days? Yeah. It's the shorter days. Shorter days yeah. yeah, it's it's all about the light transmission. And I've noticed like a lot of times like – now getting up in the morning, it's like, oh my gosh, it's dark. dark around, I'm going man. back to bed. <laughs> 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 but we're run by the clock. Yeah. And at night, it's like, wow, it's like, you know, lights are on and, and it's like, yeah. yeah. Like, you know, and as business owners, like, yeah. we got to put the parking lot's lights, lights on early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. yeah. like, er- energy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's what, call, you know, we talked about in an earlier segment about how that's what calls everything into being. So, when a leaf falls from a plant, all right, bear with me. This is this is a radio, and on YouTube, you can see me trying to do my best imitation of a leaf falling. Um, that uh, so, if you have a tree, and all of a sudden, like a leaf falls and floats to the ground, what what happened to make that fall? And it's actually the chlorophyll production has stopped. And right where the stem of the leaf connects to the plant, it actually, the cells begin to to die. And that tree seals the cut so that the leaf just drops off. And and where it was connected, there's a little bit of a leaf scar. So you can see where where it was connected. If you look at some of, if your tree is, uh, you know, short enough for you to see. 
And it's just, it's science. It's nature. It, it, it's, it's an amazing thing. Chlorophyll production, when it slows down, and that's when, you know, when it slows, you can see it by the pigments beginning to change. During the spring and summer, there's plenty of chlorophyll, so there's plenty of sunlight to to make chlorophyll. And see, when and that's what's going on is that like there's not enough light to produce the chlorophyll that's required by that particular variety of tree. And you'll see like some some trees are dropping their leaves now, and yeah, you can see. And there's some some types that are um, you know perfectly green. They look like the, it's it's summertime, but uh, when the the light begins to change. And the colors begin to change in the trees. And that we know that there are certain types of trees that are going to be like sugar maples are, are you know, beautiful, wide ranging from, from yellow to orange to red. And that there are a lot of trees that have different uh, colors. There, there's a lot of trees that are just like that bright, brilliant orange, lemony, I'm sorry, lemony uh, yellow. And now so... The three pigments of leaves, so chlorophyll obviously is green, okay, and it uses the sunlight to produce food. Now, there is carotenoid, which is carotenoid, carotenoid, yellow, orange, brown, um, and it, uh, and that when you see a tree that's that's orange, you can you know that it's that pigment is taking over. Now, it's also in fruits like. Carrots, bananas, corn, and that they're colored by carotenoid. Yeah. Anthocyanin. Anthocyanin. I was so proud of myself when I when I had learned that, that one? several years ago. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, it's anthocyanin. <laughs> anthocyanin is the red color, and that's not only in trees, but also in cranberries and red apples and cherries and strawberries and more. So if we have low temperatures in the fall early, it'll favor a lot more red in maples. Um, if there's an early frost, it, it low temperature is opposed to a frost. So if there's a frost, it weakens that red color. If it's rainy or overcast days, increase the intensity of all the fall colors. And gosh, it is dry, so I don't think it's going to be that intense. And you can right. even see a lot of the, the first changing leaves are going to be yellows. yellows. And they're like a, they're like a mu- it's not muddy yellow is the first yeah. thing I think of, but it's like a, I don't know, it's like just a, I don't know, what would you call it? Beige almost. It's not not a bright. Not a vibrant. Yeah. No, no, not vibrant at all. No. Not vibrant at all. Um, and that, got to remember this too, there, what about broadleaf trees that are here in the in the, the northern region, they shed their leaves in the fall. Um, usually, just goes right to to brown and just drops off, almost like a conifer and a pine, where the the needles will drop off too. Um, an oak tree. I've got pin oaks. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, I love them because they look so so great. Beautiful. I've had an issue with one where I had to cut it down because it had a disease issue in it, and but the thing that drove me nuts is like you you get all the leaves up in the fall and then there would be this certain amount like maybe a third or a quarter of the leaves still left still on the trees right. that wouldn't come down until the spring and then it would then be like redo. didn't I do this already? <laughs> but that's one thing about uh, about pin oaks and, and other and other types of oaks where there are other types of trees that do that too. But uh, it's just they have such a they have a, just a great. Um, form and they're just a they're just a great tree now again shrubs like azaleas they will drop their leaves too it's all about the amount of sunlight they get for instance as a rhododendron or an azalea or another type of broadleafed evergreen grows in your landscape bed that as it grows the sunlight that is not getting to the leaves underneath the new growth, that's going to drop off because it's useless to the plant. Mm-hmm. You know, it just basically is, is a burden to the plant so it falls off. So don't be surprised or worried if all of a sudden you see your azaleas have dropped a lot of leaves and they look a little bit on the sparse side. Yeah. Same thing with arborvitaes. Arborvitaes are going to uh, shed out a little bit of their of their old growth. Evergreens shed, okay, <laughs> but they keep their outer branches and their evergreen. 
deciduous trees and plants, drop everything. So, you know, if your Done. evergreens get a little bare and they shed a little bit, it is not a concern. There are some types of, of needled evergreen, like pines, where they don't shed their leave, their needles every year. They, it's like every two years. Yeah. So some years you'll notice where it's like, how come it's doing it this year? Yeah. And it's, it's just the what they do in certain in certain ways. Yeah. Enjoy the fall colors. Oh, yeah. Enjoy. Don't don't think that oh it's going to go right into winter. Mm-hmm. Now enjoy the autumn. Start enjoying the winter too because it's the next time for uh, just before spring. It also gives us a lot of opportunities that that we don't get during the regular time of the year. Um, there's a lot of views that are different. And one thing that I always love, that when we get to December 22nd, every day we get a little bit more sunshine. Every day there's a little more sunshine until we get to uh, June, and then it starts all over again. So right Cycle. now we're, we're, we just uh, got to our fall uh, season, so... It's we're, it's going to get a little dark and keep doing that, but it's not long before we yeah. we get into Christmas. Look at you, look at your local stores. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas stuff is out already. I know. I know. Did, Aaron, did you it's, tell me that somebody was telling me that they saw stuff at Target already? Oh no, it wasn't me. I don't shop at Target. You don't shop at Target. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, but to your point, yes, they definitely got started last month. Oh my gosh! All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess. We're talking yeah. August. They got started yeah. in August. That's uh, crazy. No, yeah. no. Well, everybody, Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609 685 1880. That's 609 685 one eight eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Bartolome's Triple Action contains 70% neem oil and 0.25% pyrethrins as a concentrate and ready to spray. It is an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide label to use on vegetables, fruits, nuts, herbs, spices, and ornamentals. This organic OMRI-listed product controls a wide variety of insect pests and diseases including aphids, scale, spider mites, white flies, rust, leaf spot, and powdery mildew. This insecticide is an all-in-one bottle that will cure just about any problem you may run into throughout the year. Fertilome's triple action has been helping gardeners across the country for years. Best to apply in late evening and early morning hours. Mix one ounce, which is equivalent to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. The best part is triple action may be used up to the day of harvest. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, ask for Fertilum's triple action and expect to have the best looking plants in the neighborhood. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 15.40 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 12.50 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. All the little critters like mice, chipmunks, moles, and voles, and skunks are storing up for the winter. 
bigger pests like deer, they have something else to do during the winter. <laughs> yeah, deer are thinking definitely of something else. It's the rut. It's the rut <laughs> starts in the fall, and and uh, deer deer can be a big pest. Oh, gosh. All right, but let's start with skunks. Little stinkers. <laughs> yeah. They are around. Uh, Aaron and I, we were talking on the way in. Aaron (laughs) said he caught a skunk, or your wife caught a skunk, saw the skunk trying to climb up your... So my wife pulled in at like four in the morning, and uh, she caught... Where was she? Yeah, I I don't know. She's (laughs) coming back in. Um, We'll talk about it on the way home. (laughs) (laughs) She pulled pulled in and uh, said that there was skunks outside underneath um, underneath the bird feeder. And they were climbing the bird feeder, trying to get seed, yeah. which was crazy because I had no idea uh, that, you know, skunks could climb, number one. <laughs> and that uh, she said that it was they were jumping, trying to climb the pole. And so, yeah, it was crazy because I didn't. Skunks, you know, skunks get so active this time of the year because they're trying to build up their fat reserves for winter. Um, and they don't really hibernate, but they they'll they'll sleep for a week or two during severe winter weather but their food sources are, are disappearing um but that's why like if you've noticed on your drive home there's a, <laughs> there's a lot more skunks that are uh on this middle of the road side of the road right yeah totally. hey dude look who's back we switched oh we switched our producer <laughs> how's it going <laughs> TJ's back <laughs> yeah it's going good tj was Nodding an understanding about seeing skunks in the middle of the road. I appreciate that. I love the sport. Groundhogs. Julio, uh, your well, groundhog, is he yeah. still around or no? No, he's left. I, I think um, his food sources have left. There you go. <laughs> well, you stop feeding your groundhog? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that uh, they will go and eat just about anything. Um, yeah. People that have compost piles and they don't have them like in a bin or covered, yeah. they're, 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 they're rooting get... through there trying to find anything to eat. Um, and they do, they, they, they'll, they're just eating again to gain weight because they do have an hibernation cycle, which is October. Um, let's see, it begins in October, November, and that they'll eat, um, almost two pounds of vegetation a day during the summertime. Uh, and what's interesting is, is, you know, you know how that everyone see when the, they pull the groundhog out for, well, we're going to have six more weeks of winter. Yeah, right. The thing looks like it's asleep. Yeah. It is because <laughs> they're hibernation <laughs> that time, you know, and uh, to me, I'd be scared. Yeah, yeah, the I'd thing scared turn and bite me. Like, yeah. Maybe that's why they have those big hats. <laughs> um, but <laughs> normally they're going to be, they're going to be um, basically uh, hibernating. Yeah. So, but. It's spring. Look out, Julio. That's when they were active in your yard, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're, they're yeah. They they're not, they're not interested over. in their shadow until they hit springtime, and then it's mating season. So they yeah. become very they're active. Reactive, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and that they you'll see them eat like things, uh, even like clover. It's almost that they become like a instead of eating like large fruits and apples and things like that, that they're, they're eating some grasses right. and such. So I find, I find pretty interesting. The one thing there is uh, sprays that you can use for uh, all of these things for, for both skunks and for groundhogs as repellents and everything that we're going to talk about today, there, are, there is a repellent, but it has to be used uh, regularly. Mice. I, I've my cat, I've got oh, two got- cats. Are, they're lazy they? cats. Oh, they're, they're house lazy. cats. They just sit around. I had to sign a paper that said I would not let my cats out when I adopted them. Really? 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 Yeah. Uh, Tom, yeah. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. Tom caught a mouse. <laughs> really? Yeah. I was like, yes, Tom. Uh, Kill it though. Tom. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> like, just, like Tom and Jerry? Like, no, no. It, it's it's actually Tom. All right. And then Bobby. Oh, and Bobby is is a is actually a girl with an eye. So wait, like no, 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 like Tom and Jerry, like the cartoon, no, the, the cat the and cat. the mouse. Tom, no, Tom, Tom my Tom. cat killed a mouse. It well, no, he didn't kill he it. He didn't kill it. Okay, he he played with it. 
Oh, that's Tom and Jerry. Yeah. Well, well <laughs> <laughs> sort of. <laughs> and and that that I was so proud because, you know, Tom Tom has yeah, Tom is the cat that has feline herpes that when we adopted it, we didn't know and they handed it to us and said, Oh yeah. And then you have to take Bobby too, who has no tail and is a bonded pair. Oh my. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just Tom Tom sneezes a lot of snot. <laughs> so but he caught a mouse. So I'll let it go. It's only taken six years. <laughs> it's only taken six years. But they're doing the same thing. They're you know, all of a sudden there's these nests of these these mouse. They they're prolific and they're going all through your house to try to find or trying to get in. They're you know, they're looking for Florida. You know, they're <laughs> saying, Hey, we're gonna go in the Schroeder's house. I hear it's pretty warm in there. Right. You know? spot. And those cats don't catch anything. <laughs> 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 you know? So but uh yeah, so we got rid of our mouse. Oh, that's great. Uh humanely. Got rid of our mouse, sort of, I guess. Um, moles and voles are kind of like the same thing. but And here's one thing to remember about moles with an M and voles with a V. Moles are meat eaters. So they're the ones that are looking for grubs and things inside and around your garden and in your vegetable garden. Voles, on the other hand, they're the ones that are going to be eating roots and such. Uh, that is... We don't like voles because they're killing plants. Moles are are maybe disturbing the soil around the roots, but they're not necessarily killing plants. So moles for meat eater, voles for um, for vegetarians, and that you remember that it helps you on how to treat them. There are plenty of repellents around that actually work. Uh, there are poisons that you can use, but I never like poisons, even with the mouse. Um, yeah, yeah. I, some of my family frowns that I use for traps in the house. I use, um, traps and I use, I use the, the glue traps. I'm sorry. They work. I, you know, you know, when you got one, um, you don't clip the old fashioned type trap on your finger. Uh, but as far as moles and poisoning moles or voles, it's up to you. It, it basically what happens is I'll, we'll watch it with our customers that they finally get so sick of them that they just want to kill them, poison, and that's what they want. So there are ways to to do that. Uh, chickmunks and squirrels. Oh God, I hate squirrels. I would put squirrels on a glue trap. I hate squirrels more than any of the, of the animals. But again, it. You, Trying to relocate them is probably the best thing uh, or using the repellents. The repellents work. You basically coat their food source with something that is everything from like castor oil. And like Aaron said, the skunks going after the seed where squirrels, as we all know, are going to go after chipmunks too. Um, but isn't it funny that the chipmunks don't seem to appear until fall? Yeah. But they're doing the same thing. They're trying to build up their fat reserves. And that there are sprays that you can use that are a capsian pepper that they will not eat it because it's like really, it kills their, their they go and they put it in their mouth and it burns just like it does with us. So again, uh, using repellents first and then you can do have a heart type traps and, and um, move them. But one thing we don't think about are deer. Oof. I, they're here. I never had deer. I never had deer. Yeah, All of a sudden, the past year, that's a, that one buck that I that sent. I sent a picture to Aaron. He said, what you, "It looks yeah. like you just got out of prison." Straight All up. buff. He was like gigantic. Uh, yeah. Solitary I, confinement. Yeah, just like yeah. I was thinking, more like Bambi's father. Look. But uh, <laughs> anyway, but I understood the reference that deer are gonna. And it's male deer. What they do is is that it's the rut and that it's mating season. So, you know, it's like, I don't know. It, it, it is time to get it on for the deer. So they're going to go and mark their territory and they take their antlers and they scratch up your tree. Last year we had a caller who told us, what can I do? The, it looks like all the bark has been ripped it's off of, of my red bud. And it was because a deer was rubbing its antlers up, trying to mark its territory. So it it was it wasn't good. It wasn't good. And you 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm sorry that, that I have a note here in, where antlers play an important role in deer society. <laughs> and, uh, right, you know, whether it's hunters and they talk about how many points the deer was or how big their rack is, uh, it's uh, it's something where it it is something for other deer to take notice. So <laughs> yeah. you can form your own opinion, okay? But if you have your trees and there looks like they're being scratched and they look like the bark is being stripped off, that it is deer. Use deer repellents. Um, you going out there and running after them is not a good idea and trying to chase them away. Don't do it, people. Yeah. Please, please now, Aaron, you said you use deer repellent. Yeah, and, I actually and... use Repelzol from our friends at Bonine. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I use Repelzol, and that worked. Um, definitely, it worked wonders. And uh, I would suggest uh, anybody, um, if you want to get rid of them, they were eating my pansies, man, and I was so <laughs> mad. I, like, I literally, I just bought them probably like a, a month later. They were all getting eaten up. And so I got it. I had enough. I had enough. Nature's pruners. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah, don't fear the deer. Yeah. Don't <laughs> no, fear the no. Deer. Absolutely fear the deer because what they will do is like if you have hostas, forget Nothing. it. Pansies. Yeah. And that where the, again, the repels all makes it and it puts a fear of flight in when the deer smell it and they get it. Their sense it's like, oh, got to leave. And then they go to your neighbors or go down down the you know the next backyard, and that it keeps them. In. And then they, you you have to reapply, 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 because what happens is that it goes and it it they associate your yard with the bad smell, and the and they don't go to your turf. All right, looks like we're running out of time. We're ready for a break. We'll be back right after this. Spring is here, and people have a lot of questions about weed and feed. There's one simple answer. Bio-Advanced 5-in-1 Weed and Feed. Just one application kills lawn weeds and prevents new weeds and crabgrass up to six months. And if crabgrass is already growing, it kills that too. Plus, 5-in-1 feeds and greens your lawn. Bio-Advanced 5-in-1 Weed and Feed. Get more from the blue bag. Here's the dirt on potting mixes. They're not all created equal. A Spoma organic potting mix gives roots the ideal balance of air and moisture. It contains a special blend of beneficial mycorrhiza to help grow stronger roots, bigger plants, and more bountiful blooms. Try a Spoma organic potting mix indoors and out for all your potted flowers, vegetables, and you'll see why it's the best. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you. Organic potting mix from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Your next house plant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that house plant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A house plant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to ZZ plants, Bloomers Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomers carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomers experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, Harold Kozak of Staten Island yes. called the hotline. Thank you, Harold. Love hearing from you. After listening to last week's show, here, listen to what he had to say. Hey, Julio and Lynn, Harold Kozak here from Staten Island. I was listening to your program this morning, and, you know, um, to quote uh, my own little phrase here, one time your uh, garden problem might be a garden solution for me. And you were saying about how it's a problem with uh, bananas and fruit flies. Well, you gave me some great idea because I've been – 
buying fruit flies and crickets, for that matter, from my local pet store. And uh, now, after what you just said, I'm going to use your information in a positive way, grow these fruit flies from bananas, which my wife loves bananas, and uh, feed them to my uh, sundews, pitcher plants, nepenthes, and sarcinia. And uh, matter of fact, I sent uh, Julio a picture of the of how they look now. They're just thriving on those insects. So I want to thank you guys for that. And by the way, uh, the pet store owner here on Staten Island who lives in New Jersey showed me pictures of his greenhouse. He's got pitcher plants that are so big, he said they actually catch tiny little toads and, and, and uh little tiny mice, if you can believe something like that. Well, look at the pictures I sent. Anyway, have a great day, guys, and thanks for that advice. Harold, thank wow. you for calling. You know, I've heard about the mice, mice going into go pitcher plants. Wow. I, I've heard that. That's so impressive. you're thinking about another type <laughs> yeah, of right. mouse repellent for our yeah. previous segment. <laughs> Harold's son, Andrew Kozak, is the CBS3 meteorologist, and uh, if, so if you're in the Delaware Valley, Philadelphia area, right. turn on yeah, turn CBS on. 3. You'll, you'll see Andrew. Yeah. All right. Lots wow. of stuff. Oh, Lots of stuff. Um, good stuff. Good stuff. Absolutely. Um, if you're looking for something to do this uh, coming weekend, or I guess it's next weekend for, mm-hmm. for the uh, fall, that Richfield Farms is having a, uh, I'd say, big uh, rest holiday i guess harvest festival that they're having and richfield farms is in clifton Mm -hmm. so all of our listeners uh to classic radio up there in north jersey that if you want to have a good a good time go sunday october 6th between 11 and 4 to richfield farms in clifton new jersey that's Passaic county not clinton clifton and they're 1139 Van Houten Avenue. To look them up on the web. You can get directions and instructions and tell them. They're going to have petting zoos. It's great for kids. Oh, yeah. Petting zoo. They're going to have food. They're going to have a band up yeah. there. And Got everything going. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a great time. So it's Wonderful. Harvest Fest at Richfield Farms and Garden Center in Clifton, New Jersey. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. All right, get out there in the garden. We'll yeah. see you next week right here on Bloomers in the Garden. See you in the garden.